Hey guys and welcome back for another Phoenix flashlight review. I'm pretty excited about this one. It's the HM75R. Uh, for some of you the design might look uh, familiar. That's normal. That's because it is uh, looking quite a bit like the HM65R which I got in the trail uh, version. That's pretty similar to the normal 65R but it has a sturdier headband, uh, easy to uh, adjust and it has a bit more power and different output levels. I will uh, put a link in my video description where I reviewed this one. I will also later show a little comparison uh, between the 65R and the 75R. So the 75R comes in a standard packaging like we know it from Phoenix with already quite a few information printed on which is really nice is that it has a red LED and then it has a battery in the front 18650 and it got a 21700 battery that you can additionally use if you go on longer trails or longer expeditions that you will put to the back of the head strap. So let's go ahead and unbox the light. Not so easy with the sticker on the back. So we just slide the plastic insert out of the box. We have the additional battery compartment with a note to take away the battery protection. So it comes with one 5000 milliamp 21700 battery. Spring in the tail cap threads one smoothly with a little power indicator USB-C charging port and connection port to the main light got the light itself Looks pretty similar, but yet different, a bit bigger than the HM65R. Nice side switch, rotary switch, big fan of those. Again, USB-C port for charging and connecting to the secondary battery compartment. Also here we have to take out the battery protection. Got one 3400 milliamp 18650. Not sure why they didn't opt for two times the same battery. Would have been nice to have a 21700 in the Main flashlight as well for longer run times would have been a bit heavier, but that is something that I really don't care about because they have lighter flashlights if you need a lighter flashlight. And then we will have two cables, manual, spare O-rings, warranty card and then a little flyer with other Phoenix models to make a bit of publicity. So we will have one long cable which is about 70 centimeters long so two times USB-C that will lock into place so that will not fall off while being connected to the flashlight and then if you want to use it on the head strap 
then you have the shorter cable. So to put it in, you just have to push it firmly in and then turn, quarter of a turn, there's a little lock sign on the um, connector itself. And then we have the nice slide-in mount at the back of the head strap, so you just clip it in. And then we have to do the same at the front. So just push it in, turn, and then you can fix the cable to the cable mount and it is all connected. So that's pretty cool. Turning on the light, first turn will get us to the spotlight. Pushing the side button will cycle through the different modes of the spotlight. Then we go to the floodlight, again pushing to get through the different modes. One more activates the red LED, so blinking. So we got blinking in the first, that's a bit unnecessary in my eyes. And then we got low, medium, high, quite and high red mode. So the button is running quite smooth. You can't turn the light off. With the side button you have to turn it all the way around. And then here we have probably a battery indicator which shows us one bar left. As soon as you turn the light on once we turn on here, so I see it is charging the main battery. So you see it is fl flashing the separate blue dots. That means this battery is charging the main battery. So let's have a closer look at the user manual. It's quite a big user manual, so I will not uh, go into all the details uh, that they write down in the manual. I will. Uh, get the most important stuff written down in the product description or video description. So main thing we need to know is that the switch on the light is called switch A and the switch on the power bank or runtime extension or battery extension how they call it is switch B. So single click turns on the power bank function. You can of, you can of course also use the light uh, with another power bank if you want a bigger one you just have to have one with USB-C and uh, get one with a decent uh, output so that it charges the flashlight fast. What I don't really get is you have the possibility to push the button here for three seconds and then you can switch the light load detection function off. So now it will blink faster but it makes no difference on the charging LEDs uh, in the flashlight itself. If you push the button again for three seconds, it flashes red again. And now it will blink only once a second. So I don't really see the use of this. Uh, however, uh, it will blink green unless there's more than 3.2 volts left in this battery and as soon as it blinks red it will uh, mean that it is below uh, 3.2 volts and here it's the same while charging it uh, shows you uh, the, the different blue LEDs once it's fully charged it will be solid blue and uh, we also have a little uh, 
indication here that while, while using the battery four lights are on it's between 100 and 80 percent if three lights are on it's between 80 and 60 two lights on 60 to 40 one light 40 to 20. the light has an intelligent overheat protection and it also has uh, intelligent brightness downshift function so if you want to use the light and to prevent it from burning stuff if you turn on the light and it gets close here the, to the sensor for more than a few seconds it will dim down and then it will dim up again if you want to turn off this one you have to turn the light off push the button for six seconds Then it will blink in the flood mode and now you see it will not dim down. If you want to deactivate or reactivate the mode again hold down button A for 6 seconds. Then they also say that the light has memory mode. So it will memorize each mode that you select. So it's not blinking to start, so that's true. It has memory detection or mem memory mode. That's pretty nice. And I think that's pretty much everything that we need to know as of the user interface. They say that you can use the flashlight with two uh, CR1238 batteries if uh, no 18650 is uh, available you should not however use 16340 as they have too much voltage and then uh, for the power extender you can of course use 21700 batteries or with an adapter uh, 18650s but they say that they are banned because uh, you need an adapter and it's not uh, delivered with the flashlight. So for the uh, product specifications of the light, it uh, might be easier to get back the box as it is better written here. So we have the uh, head lamp including the mount, the, the sizes here I will write them in the uh, comment uh, box the weight including the power extender batteries and headband is 321 grams so that's not too heavy um, 1600 lumens on the maximum output 223 meters maximum beam distance 1448 candela in the brightest mode impact resistance to drop off height of 2 meters and waterproof up to a height of 2 meters. So there's a lot of different modes that you can uh, try. It's a bit of a shame that they didn't do the poss or activate the possibility that you could use the two LEDs together. That's something I really like with the HM65R that you have a switch to activate each one of the LEDs separately that I like better. However, I really like the the turning uh, or switch rotary switch. That's something that is really useful uh, while exploring to not have to search for the buttons. But here, a possibility to activate all together would have been really nice. So I will now charge the battery and the power extender and then we will measure the light in our Ulbricht ball and uh, I will head out to the forest to show you what it will perform in the dark. Hey guys, I'm outside with the Phoenix HM75R in the spot mode, in the lowest output mode which is indicated with around 50 lumen. I measured 43 lumen I will now go to the 350 lumen, which is indicated 
uh, which I measured with 300 lumen. Then we go to the 800 lumen mode. Already a very nice beam distance. This one I measured with around 750 lumen. And then we go to the 1600 turbo mode, which I measured with 1500 lumen. Then if you turn the light off or on or you switch to another mode, it will always memorize it, so that's nice. However, I would have liked that the flashlight would first have started in the flood mode. So this is the lowest flood mode with around 5 lumen. I measured 6.3 lumen, so very nice moon mode but it could also be a bit lower for my liking then we switch to the 150 lumen mode which i measured with 140 lumen we go to the 400 lumen mode which i measured with 390 lumen and then we go to the 1000 lumen mode which i measured with 1022 lumen so that's pretty nice which also would have been pretty nice as if you can combine spot and throw, but that's not possible. Then we have the red mode, the lowest mode, which is indicated with five lumen. I measured six. This is pretty nice for preserving your night vision. The second mode with 30 lumen, I measured 50 lumen. And then we have 120 lumen, which I measured with 190 lumen. So overall, that's pretty bright for a red light. And then we have the red blinking. I tried to take out the battery in the front compartment and only fuel the light with the battery, uh, with the 21700 battery in the back. That does not work, so you always have to use both batteries if you want to use the double fuel source. Uh, personally, I don't like the battery at the back. I prefer to put it on the belt, but uh, if I might use it on my helmet, I don't think that it will notice it that much. So overall, Phoenix did build a very nice light here. I really like the rotary switch, and maybe in a future version they will... Uh, take note of it to uh, make the possibility available to use all the lights at the same time. That would be even cooler. So I hope all the questions to this flashlight have been answered in my video. If not, please make sure to put them in the comment section. And as always, I would really like if you could leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you soon, guys. Bye bye.